What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to talk about putting martial arts into everyday activities. The idea that martial arts happens beyond the mats, beyond the bows, so to speak. Everything we do can be martial arts. And we don't mean that in, in, a, in a hokey way. Stick around. You'll see what we're talking about. If you're new to the show, I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I founded Whistlekick because I love traditional martial arts. And then I went and found Andrew because he also loves traditional martial arts. And that's why we do the show. Andrew, how are you? I'm great. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks. For I'm a little tired, but on. I'm good. Yeah, I am too. I, I will confess. I, I went back to bed after first cup. Took a quick oh, nap. Do you, have a new pup? do you have a new puppy as well? I do not have I'm a new tired. puppy. <laughs> that's why I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's... It's it's like it's like a baby that's never going to be able to tell you what's wrong. Yeah, my I will say my wife is very good at speaking dog, like hmm. she truly is uncanny at how good she can like read what the dog. Like, oh, that's cool. She will say like, "Oh, she wants this right now," and sure enough, that's what she wants. Like it's pretty amazing, but it's still it's like the puppy like, whisperer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just like a puppy or a baby, we have helped this show grow, you like that so much, into something that we're both really proud of. You know, if you're unfamiliar with Whistlekick and all the things that we do in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain on the road to getting everyone in the world to train, please go to whistlekick.com. Check out everything we've got going on there. We have a store where you can buy things to support us and use the code PODCAST15. We also have links to the various events we put on. Uh, the various project were, projects we're involved in, like Marshall Journal, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And honestly, it's constantly changing. And how do I know it's constantly changing? Because I'm doing the constant changes. There's a <laughs> lot that's going on over there. Now, if you love this show and you really want to go deeper and get transcripts and links and all that good stuff, go to whistlekickmarshalartsradio.com. We don't hide any of the old episodes. And I often have people reach out to me. Well, have you ever interviewed this person? Uh, probably. Go search. Uh, what about a topic on this? Yep. Go search, go check out all the episodes that are there. And if you don't like the search function that's there, don't forget Google, right? You can just search whistlekick martial arts radio, this person or this topic, and it's going to come up a lot of Google optimization in there. One of the things that we do that I've not yet talked about that Andrew was very sad about a moment ago in a sense, <laughs> people are wondering, what, what, what is, what is it? We have a Patreon. We offer a Patreon where we give you exclusive behind the scenes, bonus content, lots of great stuff. And if you love what we do, you will love the Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. If you're watching, you can see Andrew ripped the piece of paper that he has had for quite a long time. A couple of years, at least a year sign. now. Think, a couple of couple years? years? Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, it, it's time. It has served its duty. <laughs> we love having the Patreon. We love doing that because it gives us an opportunity to bring even more value to those who really find the most value in what we do. And you can get it for two bucks a month. If you want to know who the upcoming guests are, two bucks a month. You want bonus episodes that you're not going to find elsewhere? Five bucks a month. You want bonus videos? It's 10. Books, training programs, all kinds of good stuff. You're going to find it in there. Go and check it out. And somewhat new to us, new to this show, none of the episodes we've recorded with this have aired yet, but we have our first sponsor. And I'm really excited about this because the sponsor that we have is not just any old podcast sponsor. If you listen to podcasts, you know that most podcasts will take anybody as a sponsor. You know, um, buy this random product that has nothing to do with what we do or support this event that, you know, two of you would like to do. They'll take anybody's money. Well, that's not us. And we've talked about this for years, what we would do with a sponsor. Well, if you're watching the video, you can see our first sponsor here. Oh, looks like it might be reversed, uh, is Kataro. And if you know Kataro, you probably know them from making the absolute best martial arts belts. They make incredible belts. And that's what I'm holding here is my Kataro belt. I got to go through the whole process, pick 
everything. Now, I went very simple. I have a simple black belt. I don't put stripes on my belt. No disrespect if you do. But it has the Whistle Kick logo. And the embroidery on this is absolutely top notch. They make everything in the U.S. to order. It is, I mean, it is, it is the true definition of custom. And let's face it, we, most of us have a number of uniforms, at least a few, if we've been training a while. But we probably have one belt. Well, if you're going to have one belt, it should probably be a great belt. Absolutely. And if you want that belt to last a really long time, that's Katara. So you can use the code. WK10 for 10% off your first order. Capital W, capital K, numbers one, number zero. 10% off. And I hope you do. You can also follow them on Instagram, Kataro USA, Facebook.com slash Kataro, and their website is K A T A A R O dot com, Kataro.com. Yeah. And, you know, people will, you know, if they're regular listeners to the show, they would have heard, uh, Gage's episode a, a couple of yeah. weeks ago. Gage now, Hanlon, who is, I don't know, that, did we get to his official title? He's not the owner. Director of marketing? He's not the owner. Like that. Uh, I mean, I have not asked him what his official title is. A great guy. Is, but it sounds, he's he's it a great guy. Like and a wonderful chief marketing officer. Basically, is what it sounds Some, like something like that. Yeah. 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 But he, he's a um, good guy and he works real hard. But one of the things that really got me when I listened to that episode is you know like you mentioned i have multiple uniforms why because i go to multiple classes a week and i don't do laundry every single day right right and you know so the, and they even they they wear out right because i'm wearing them constantly mm -hmm. and the same thing happens to our belt and you know yes we often will see the, the the belt that changes from from black and starts to turn white and the significance of that but the reality is if you have a cheap belt it's going to fray and break. Um, mm -hmm. And these belts are such good quality. And if you are going to put so much time and effort into your training, nothing better symbolizes that than your belt. And so if you're going to put so much time and effort and money into your training, I think spending a little bit extra on getting a good, high quality belt is something that you deserve. Yeah. Yeah. It, it blows my mind the number of people who put ten dollar belts on and wear them for years. And, and, and if you and if that's you, okay. if that's something you were doing, it's totally fine, right? We're equal opportunity. But if you want the best quality belts, and how do I know how good these quality are? Because we tried making belts. Mm -hmm. Right? Whistle Kick has made a lot of things. We made belts. If you have one, hold on to it. It's a collector's item. We're we're not doing belts again. We, we don't it need is to. difficult. We don't and need to. Definitely now, don't need to have, now because we have access to the best, highest quality Qatar. belts made by Qatar. Yep. All right. Let's get to the show. Yeah. Let's do it. Adding martial arts what are we, to everyday Adding activities. martial arts to everyday activities. I keep forgetting the title. And this came out. We should give the shout out where this Absolutely. came from. You and I were at an event and. Dave Kovar was there teaching, and at the end of a session, he invited everyone to sit down. And we had a conversation. It was uh, more him sharing his thoughts. But it was wonderful. And I, I, I think you had brought this up, Andrew, as a topic. So I'm curious what you thought of what Mr. Kovar said. So it's interesting. First off, you were the one that suggested this, isn't it? Oh, was I? Oh, yeah, okay. you were. Oops. Um, but it was one that I was right on board with uh, mm -hmm. because I was at that same session that you were. Um, and it definitely got my mind thinking about the ways that we can think of things as being martial arts, even though mm -hmm. most people wouldn't. Um, and the one of the things that he one of the, the things that he said that that I really resonated well with me is you know you you're hungry for a snack and you could have an apple or you could have a chocolate bar that's mm -hmm. a choice that you can make and there's nothing wrong with either choice but what's going to be better for your body what's going to be better for training like that that could some could easily say one could easily say that is martial arts choosing the apple over the chocolate bar could be martial could be considered martial arts because you are helping if train your body well, and, and more so if you recognize that that chocolate bar is not 
good for you, mm-hmm. that it makes a, even if it's mild, negative impact on your body, you could call that self-defense. You're yep. defending yeah, yourself I'm... from the chocolate bar. You know, is that a yep. bit of a stretch from the way we usually use the word? Absolutely. Sure, sure. But the sentiment's there. Yeah, a- absolutely, absolutely. And and the, the oh, hang on, how do how I'm, I get to, I got to put these words together. Hang on. Sure. I got a bunch of them in my head. Um, I'm taking a note. It is often said that, you know, we as martial arts, martial artists often, not always, but often talk about self-defense and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's, you know, it really, I, I've often used the word self-protection better because I don't like defense, but, you know, protecting your body is really important. But we all know the the downsides to smoking cigarettes. Hmm. But I know a lot of martial artists who smoke. And that's fine if they're going to do that. But let's recognize that's not keeping your body the, as protected as it could be. You know, you are putting your body in danger. I mean, is it different from walking down a dark alley at late at night? Yeah, that's a different choice, but it's still not best for you. Yeah, because smoking cigarettes is guaranteed to have a negative impact on your life. Walking down right. the dark alley doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. And and we all know it. It doesn't matter who you are. If you smoke cigarettes, you know that it's not a good thing. Yep. And I and I recognize that let's be let's be clear, like nicotine is an addictive substance and people are addicted to I mean I get that, but but that is still a choice that you've chosen to make. Mm-hmm. And and we all have them. I mean, let's face it, we all have habits. We all have things that maybe we could do better, right? Like it's it's impossible to do everything that is healthy for your body and avoid everything that is unhealthy for your body. So, you know, uh, please, please, I hope folks don't let Andrew's example get you down. You know, we're just using it as a, a strong example. But keep going, please. Um, so, I mean, those sorts of choices can be considered martial arts. Yeah. I how did that agree. resonate? How did that conversation resonate for you? What I what I liked, and, and I'll confess, you know, my, my memory for such things isn't great. I tend to remember emotions more than I do specific words that people make. And what I recall from that conversation was the low level that he was able to bring in and talk about. Um, I seem to remember an example about grocery shopping, putting something in the trunk of the car or something like that. I don't know if you're remembering it in better detail than I am. But we are... You know, we often, as martial artists, we look for problems to prevent, right? And and this is the, I'm not going to sit with my back to the door, right? This is a common thing among martial artists. We don't like people behind us. Totally get it. Not suggesting that it is not worthwhile. But we spend a lot of time, oh, I've got to sit with my back you know, without my back to the door, I've got to keep an eye on what's going on. I'm a sheepdog, you know, whatever. But the statistics around something happening are so incredibly small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it not serve us to take the same discipline, the same understanding? Forget about the problems for a moment, but the same attention to detail that has made us better at whatever it is we do within our training and apply it to something as inane as grocery shopping. Yep. How I place the bag in the back of the car. Yep. Or and, and again, I don't necessarily mean, well, place the bag in such a way that if you get in, in an accident, the um, you know, whatever is heavy in the bag doesn't roll out and hit you in the head in a rollover accident and, and cause you harm. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the recognition that the things that we do can color all of the things that we do. We can shop like a, like a martial artist. We can open the door like a martial artist. We can drive like a martial artist. You know, think of the, you know, uh, I'm thinking of, of a few places here in town in Keene where it goes from two lanes to one lane. Mm-hmm. And often people are like, oh, I got to get in front. I got to speed up. I got to speed up. I want to get in front of that one car. Well, yeah, but you're still right behind the other car in front there. Like you just saved yourself how much time? 
maybe 10 seconds, you might get to your destination. If you and I are going to the same place, you got there 10 seconds before me. Is that really smart when you could have caused an accident or not? maybe you don't cause an accident, but you piss off the guy behind you that you just cut off who now has road rage issues. Is it worth it to get to your location five to 10 seconds earlier? If your life is that urgent, then I would suggest you've likely made a significant number of mistakes before that 10 second event. Yeah, exactly. When we when we talk about making bringing martial arts into let, let's not just call it everyday life let's call it common life the things that happen all the time you know what are some of the other ways that we can we can look at this you know we've talked about and and I think everybody's likely on board with the you know do things that that are good for your body or good for your mind right like that's it's fairly obvious and I doubt we have to convince anyone of that but where else can we take this. I mean, you can also just use your martial arts and like, uh, this is such a silly thing and I know you do it as well. Uh, I will go out of my way to close my do close my fridge door or cabinet doors with kicks. And I'm not talking hard, right? I don't want to, I don't want to knock all the stuff out of my fridge shelf shelves, right? On the door. But right. you know, I will bring up my leg and I will slowly bring it out and close the door with a round kick or with a hook kick depending on how i'm standing um and it i mean yeah and the same thing with the with the car door right i've got my 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 both of my arms are filled with groceries and i want to close the door could i just use my knee and just you know kind of yeah sure i could but i will actually purposely take a step back lift up my leg and slowly bring it out and then put a little force behind it to make sure there's enough force to close the door does it look kind of silly when somebody sees me do it yeah probably do I care? No, not really. Regardless, maybe you find it mildly enjoyable, but how many times a year do you close those doors? If you're <laughs> putting intent into that practice, even if it's only one repetition, it's a lot of extra kicks. Yeah. yeah. And one of the major bits of feedback that we get from people when we talk about martial arts and improving as a martial artist and spending more time is that they don't have time. Yeah, and yeah. you know we've released a number of things, uh, books and offerings that that address that, and there are more that are coming. But everybody has the chance to shut the door with a well placed kick. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the opportunity when they sit down to practice, you know, horse stance for three seconds before they sit in the chair, or, you know, whatever it is. And maybe you don't want to do everything because maybe that's too much for you. But yeah. I bet if there's something that someone is struggling with, they're trying to improve in class, there's a way for them to bring that into their life. Yeah. I had a student who was working on Sanchin and she mm -hmm. worked at a grocery store. Was a, a, which, which for a those of you who maybe don't, don't train karate. It's a, a very common, intense uh, form. Like, like a, like a pumse or something. Yeah. And it's a very narrow stance. Right. Um, and so she worked at a, a grocery store as a cashing out at a, at a register. And mm -hmm. so she would just stand in sun chin and, mm -hmm. and use that time to like work on strengthening her legs. Cause she's just standing there doing this with her arms and grabbing something. And cause this was, you know, this was, this was years ago before there were a lot of conveyor belts um, where, you yeah. know, or you, know, you have to just, you have to scan everything that goes by. Right. And so she would just stand in some chin. Nobody could see her feet. Mm -hmm. right? right. But she used that as an opportunity to, you know what, I'm going to work on strengthening my legs because that stance allows you to like put tension and you know, when she got tired, sure. she would relax and that's fine. But she was going to be standing there for four or five hours a day. Why not use that time? Might as well find some benefit in it beyond. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, let's, let's throw people a couple more examples. See if anybody, we can give folks some other ideas so they can take this sentiment into their life. You know, standing in Sanchin, if you're standing for, for a long period of time, 
you talked about shutting doors. That's that's another big one. Um, what about so when people people often have a difficult time practicing their forms, finding time to practice their forms. You know, maybe they don't have the amount of room that they want. But if what you're practicing is remembering it, or if you believe that visualization is beneficial, brushing your teeth, especially if you have an electric toothbrush, mm -hmm. that's about the time it takes to get through a form slowly. Yep. Or maybe you're washing your hair and your eyes are closed because you don't want the soap in your eyes. So you're visualizing going through a form or a technique or a sparring match. I think visualization is, is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I mean, neither of and us I have like that looking... issue, but... No, no not at all. <laughs> I don't even own shampoo. <laughs> you won't find any in my house. Uh, to folks who only ever listen, neither Andrew nor I have hair. <laughs> I have a little bit of a beard. That's it. Um, where else can this come in? The the one for me that I've been that I myself am working on, um, mm. and and when he said it there, it really kind of hit home was the the snacking and the food and what you put in your body. And for those that don't know, I drive a lot. I'm in my car constantly, and I'm in my car a lot at night. <laughs> And I've had some close calls. You drive calls like 30, 40,000 miles a year. Yeah, typically 40 to 45,000 miles on my car a year. Yeah. And a lot of that driving is nighttime. A lot of it's long, long hours. Like I'll be in the car driving for four or five hours at a time. And, you know, I've had some close calls with being like, whoa, well, I'm really tired and like, mm -hmm. I need to stay awake. And so I have gotten into the habit for years of drinking soda because it's got the caffeine because I don't drink coffee. I don't like coffee. Um, and so I would be drinking soda late at night and just to keep my, just to keep me awake, I would start eating potato chips because it, it gives me something to crunch and the salt. You're, will you're like not alone. Wake me up. I think for uh, most of us, there. snacking is part of driving because we yeah. get bored. And so, salt and vinegar potato chips, for example, like you put that in your mouth and you're like, Oh, and your eyes are like, Oh, I'm awake now. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. If I drive, you know, I drive in my car every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, pretty much a long two to two and a half hour drive to get somewhere, and then a two to two and a half hour drive back. So that's six car rides, right? Mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, there and back. That's six car rides. Every single car ride, getting at least one soda and some chips or snacks. Mm -hmm. I have put on more weight than I am comfortable saying. Sure. And when Dave mentioned this, that, you know, choosing an apple over snacks, it, you know, unhealthy snacks is martial arts. I was like, wow, you know what? That's absolutely right. And I have consciously been making an effort to uh, I don't buy soda nearly to the same degree I used to. Occasionally now I do, but I see it more as a, as a treat. And I myself am not a fan of water. I just it has no taste. And so I don't like that. But mm -hmm. smart water produces lightly flavored waters, mm -hmm. like passion fruit, pineapple. Like, oh, that's great. And it's just a hint. And it's still water. And yes, there may be some other things in there, but you, there's no one on the earth that's going to tell me. But it's that. better than drinking six sodas a week. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and so and I'm, keep going. I'm still having a lot of water intake. I'm still hydrating. It's still good. It's certainly, like you said, it's better than all of that soda. And then... Uh, getting snacks that are healthier. Um, I can't tell you the number of pints of blueberries I've purchased in the last few weeks. I love blueberries and they're easy to go and I can, or peanuts. Peanuts are another one that I can just have in the car and snack on them. And again, having lots and lots of peanuts maybe isn't quote healthy, but it's way healthier than five than bags chips. of chip, chips and Reese's, a bunch of Reese's peanut butter cups. And, and, like, and there's I a, definitely see that as practicing martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we can, again, we, we talked about the, the impact to your body, but there's another way to look at it that is very much martial arts. And this kind of goes uh, a, a bit counter to the way a lot of society wants us to look at things these days. You said that healthier, you necessarily say healthy, healthier. Yeah. 
Now, if we said, what is the healthiest choice for you to drink while you're driving in the car? It's water, right? Obviously. Yep. But what you've chosen is healthier than the sodas. Even if you would only have the soda on the, the drives home, right? Cutting out half of it, that's healthier. And in martial arts, we tend to be really good at saying, okay, you've learned the form. Now let's refine the form. Now let's refine it more. Now let's add power. Now let's add application, right? Or sparring, okay? Um, just don't get hurt. Now we can speed it up a little bit. Now try doing this, add this, add that. If you, if you talk to anybody, the early stage of their martial arts career, they will often say, I looked at the black belts in the front of the room and I had no idea how I was gonna get there. I didn't think I ever could, right? Because there's so much in between where they start and where they're trying to go. But how do you yep. get there? By taking a step at a time. And this is where, actually, surprisingly, I have a copy of it right here. This is the whole concept of this book that I wrote, 12 Months to Health, right? It, it's, it was about bringing the martial arts mindset into looking at your health and your fitness and just living a better life by making small changes and continually making them. Yeah, yeah. Anything else we should add? No, I don't think so. I think, it, again, all of this episode is every episode and every episode we do is just food for thought. Literally, yeah. food for thought. Just stuff to think about. Ha. And hopefully you have thought. We, we, we've been thinking. I think during these episodes, one of my favorite thing, reasons that we do them. Audience, thank you for coming by. Thank you for listening or watching. Remember, we do have videos of every episode on YouTube. And you can catch the audio feed anywhere you might find podcasts. Go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com if you want the show notes, transcripts, links, photos, videos on guest episodes, all that good stuff. Remember to support Kataro, K-A-T-A-A-R-O dot com. Use the code WK10 for 10% off your first order. That's capital letters and numbers. You can follow them on Instagram, Kataro USA. And I hope you go check out their stuff. Even if you're not in the market for a belt right now, go check it out. It's drool worthy. And there's so I much was, customization, you will come up with something that you're like, oh, I was just about to say, so I went earlier in the week because I knew we were recording yeah. this episode and I wanted to refresh my memory on some of their customization stuff. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty amazing. You can put in what you want things to say. How do you want it angled? How do you not angled? How do you want it mm. oriented? Uh, yeah. What? font do you want and they'll show you examples. you can pick like any yeah it's it's really pretty amazing and uh and, and i even have notes go i'm sorry finish up uh, i mean their biggest thing that i think is really cool is um you know you mentioned that you don't use you don't put rank stripes on your belt which is fine and there's nothing wrong with those people that do but one of the cool but... coolest things they do offer is free rank stripes for life so let i'm an instructor i promote someone to first degree black belt I let's say I get them a, a you know a custom embroidered belt with a one stripe on the bottom, and then a couple years later they test for second on. Now I've got to go buy another customized belt with two stripes on it. Like ugh, that's a pain. Um, you get a Katara or, or belt. What I've seen a, happen in a lot of situations is they bring it to another embroiderer or even the same embroiderer, and the color of the thread is just a little bit off or the yep, thickness is yep. just a little bit off and you can exactly. see it and it looks funny and you have to pay for it and you have to pay for it one of the cool things with kataro is if i buy a black belt for my new black belt with from kataro and have that one gold stripe on it if i used gold maybe i want red maybe i want purple like whatever uh but when they test for second on i take that belt and mail it back to kataro they will put a new rank stripe on it for free that's pretty cool so I don't have to buy a whole new belt. So even though that belt might be a little pricier because you're purchasing a higher quality, better product, in the long term, you might actually end up saving yourself money, especially if you're a school owner. It, it genuinely, you know, Kataro's been around for a certain amount of time, uh, 2003, if I remember correctly. Um, I bet there are belts that have been out there for 20 years. You know, I know how long my belt has lasted, my original black belt. And it was not this quality. So it'll be interesting to see how long this belt and the belts that, you know, folks around us that I, I get to know last. Two other things to let you know out there in the audience. 
seminars. They are available. If you want me to come out, maybe I'll bring Andrew. You know, it depends on the time and where we're going. Let's let's come teach you some fun stuff. And consulting. I do offer, we offer as Whistlekick, martial arts consulting services to schools, regardless of what you teach or how big you are. If you are interested in us applying the same integrity and consistency and honesty that you see in everything that we do to your martial arts school and helping you grow and make more money, we can do it. Reach out for either of those things. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew's email address is andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. And that brings us to the end. Until next time, train, train hard. Train hard. Smile. Smile. And have a great day. And have a great day.